Welcome to Tumamina Teaching. Today we'll be discussing the theme Pythagoras and we'll be doing it in three different sections. The theorem, the converse theorem and the classification of triangles. Now Pythagoras was a man who was completely obsessed with triangles, specifically right angle triangles, the triangles with a 90 degree angle. Now before we can start with Pythagoras theorem, we first need to understand how to name sides and angles. Now when we have vertexes, we write them in capital letters, capital letter A, B or C. And when we connect them, we have sides. Now the sides, we actually use small letters, not capital letters. So small letter A, B and C. We can also speak about side AC, capital letters, side AB, capital letters, or side CB or BC, capital letters. The order doesn't matter. Also, it's very, very important to note the following. Side small letter A is opposite angle A. Small letter C, which is a side, is opposite angle C. And small letter B, which is a side, is opposite angle B. So angles we write with capital letters and they have these symbols on top of them. Angle A, angle B and angle C. Now we are back to the Pythagorean theorem. Now what is especially important to note is the fact that the 90 degree angle tells us a secret. It tells us exactly where the hypotenuse lies. My hypotenuse is my longest side of my triangle and it's always opposite the 90 degree angle. The theorem for Pythagoras is as follows. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared where C is my hypotenuse. It's always important to remember that your hypotenuse will always be alone on the right hand side of your equation. Another thing which is important to note is the fact that you always need to write pith next to your formula. That gives recognition to Pythagoras for formulating this theorem. I hope you were wondering why the equation is squared. Let's look at a square. To determine the area of a square we say the surface area is side squared, so side times side. Let's draw a square using my hypotenuse side. That means all of the sides of my square will actually all be equal to C since the sides of a square are all equal. Then I draw a square on another side of my right angle triangle. That means all of these will be B. Then another square on the last side of my right angle triangle. That means all of these sides will be A since the sides of a square are all the same length. That means if I have my Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, it really means the surface area of the green square plus the surface area of the red square is equal to the surface area of my blue square. Now it's time to do our first example. Calculate the unknown side. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we need two of the three sides known. The third side can be unknown and that is what is calculated with the theorem. Let's first find our hypotenuse. Remember that our hypotenuse is always opposite our 90 degree angle. That means it would be side C. Side C is our unknown side as well. Since we know that side B will be opposite angle B, we know this will be B. And side A is opposite angle A, we know that this will be A. So I can write my formula A squared plus B squared is equal to my hypotenuse C squared. Remember to always give recognition to Pythagoras by writing pith. A is 3, so I write 3 squared plus b, which is 4 squared, is equal to c squared. 3 squared is 9, plus 4 squared, which is 16, all equal to c squared. This gives me a total of 9 plus 16, which is 25. But now I have an answer for c squared. I don't want the answer for c squared, I only want c. So that means I need to draw a square root over c squared. But what I do on the one side, I need to do on the other side. So I draw a square root over 25 as well. That means I find C equal to 5. But now I always need to write my units. And this time they didn't give me any units. Usually they will say millimeters, centimeters or meters. And now they didn't give me any units. That means I need to write that it is 5 
units long. Let's do another example. First of all, let's find our hypotenuse. My hypotenuse is always opposite my 90 degree angle. That means this will be my hypotenuse, ZY. Remember that you can call your side ZY or you can call it a small letter of the opposite angle. So that means I can say opposite angle X is small letter X. Opposite angle Z is small letter Z and opposite angle Y is already my small letter Y. So now I need to write my formula. For Pythagoras, my hypotenuse is always alone on the one side squared. So y squared plus z squared is equal to my hypotenuse x squared, giving recognition to Pythagoras again. y squared is my unknown, plus z squared means it's 4 squared, is equal to x squared, which is 5 squared. I hope that you've noticed that this time my hypotenuse is not my unknown side. So they really can give me any two sides and I can calculate the third side, if it is the hypotenuse or not. So that means I have y squared plus 16 is equal to 25. So y squared is equal to 25 minus 16. That gives me a total for y squared of 9. Once again, I don't want the answer for y squared, I want the answer for y. So I need to draw a square root over y squared. What I do on the one side, I need to do on the other, so the square root of 9. So the answer for y is 3, but don't forget to write your units. This time they gave me the units, centimeters. Now they ask me to calculate the unknown side, ed. The problem is, using Pythagoras' theorem, I need two of the three sides known. In this triangle where I find the side ED, I only have one known side. That means I don't have enough information to calculate ED. Let's try the next angle. Once again, I only have one side known and two sides unknown, which means I don't have enough information. So I need to start in my first triangle where I have two of the three sides known. That means I need to calculate EB. For now, I'm going to use the names for the sides EB, EA and AB, the same for the rest of the triangles. You are welcome to use the small letters as well. So, first of all, I need to find my hypotenuse. My hypotenuse is always on the opposite side of my 90 degree angle. That means EB is my hypotenuse. So I write AE squared plus AB squared is equal to EB squared, which is my hypotenuse, always giving recognition to Pythagoras. AE is 48 squared plus AB, which is 14 squared. This is all equal to EB squared, which is my unknown. 48 squared is equal to 2,304, plus 14 squared, 196, which is equal to EB squared. That gives me a total for EB squared of 2,500. Once again, I don't want the answer for EB squared, I want the answer for only EB. So I write EB squared under a square root and I do the same for the 2,500. That means the answer for EB will be 50 and always remember your unit in this example, it's millimeters. Now that I have my hypotenuse EB equals 50 millimeters, I can move on to calculating the side EC. Since I have in my second triangle two known sides now, I can continue finding EC. First of all, let's find our hypotenuse. Our hypotenuse is on the opposite side of the 90 degree angle, which makes EB my hypotenuse once again. That means BC squared plus EC squared is equal to EB squared, giving recognition to Pythagoras. This will count marks, so remember it. BC is 30 squared plus EC is my unknown now. And I have my hypotenuse EB, which I have just calculated, so it's 50 squared. 30 squared is 900 plus EC squared and 50 squared is 2500. So that means EC squared is 2500 minus 900, which gives me a total for EC squared of 1000. 
600. I only want EC, so I write the square root on both sides. That means I find the answer for EC equal to 40 millimeters. So now finally, I'm in my third triangle and I have two of the three sides. Two of the sides are known and I can calculate my third unknown side. So I determine which side is my hypotenuse. Since I know that angle C is 90 degrees in my second triangle, I know that it will be a 90 degree angle in my third triangle because angles on a straight line is 180 degrees. That means my hypotenuse will be opposite my 90 degree angle, making ED my hypotenuse. So I can write EC squared plus CD squared is equal to ED squared giving Pythagoras recognition. EC is 40 squared plus CD 9 squared is equal to ED squared. 40 squared is 1600 plus 9 squared is 81. So I have a total for ED squared as 1681. Writing the square root on both sides to find the answer for only ED, I find that the answer for ED is 41 millimeters. Now this is another way to apply the Pythagorean theorem. They give me a word sum. In triangle DEF, angle E is 90 degrees. So you need to go and draw a triangle yourself and make one of the angles a 90 degree angle. Since they tell me that angle E is my 90 degree angle, I name that angle E. I know this is triangle DEF, so I can choose which angle gets the name D and which angle gets the name F. Now I need to name my sides. Opposite angle E will be side E. Opposite angle D will be side D and opposite angle F will be side F. Furthermore, they tell me that side F is eight millimeters. They tell me that D is six millimeters, and then they want me to calculate side E. Let's start with determining which side is my hypotenuse. I know that my hypotenuse is always on the opposite side of my 90 degree angle. So side E will be my hypotenuse. That means D squared plus F squared is equal to my hypotenuse squared, which is E squared, giving Pythagoras the necessary recognition. D squared is 6 squared plus F squared, which is 8 squared, and E squared is my unknown. 6 squared is 36 and 8 squared is 64, giving me a total for E squared of 100. Draw a square root over E squared, but what I do on the one side, I need to do on the other. So that means E is equal to 10 millimeters, remembering to write my units. Here follows six practice questions. When the question pops up, pause the video, do it yourself, and then play it again to see the answer. Then move on to the next question.
This marks the end of part one of the Pythagorean theorem. If you feel you've mastered it, move on to part two, where we discuss the converse theorem of Pythagoras.